Hello and welcome to this video tutorial series on how to use QLC Plus. In this series I'm going to cover the basics from just using QLC on this particular interface which I've designed or creating your own interfaces like this and how to program a load of other cool things to go with it. Um, this first video is going to be mainly looking at just how to use this interface. This is the one which I have built for King's Church in Bolton so you guys from there watching this you will learn a lot on how to use this system and hopefully be able to get lights up and running. Um, on my second screen I have this. This is an interface to showing uh, the lights which are currently active but I'll add that in in post so I'll put that in the top corner over here somewhere so you can just see what's happening with the lights. And I'll go through with all how to set that up in a next uh, another video. So let's get started then. Um, this is the basic lighting setup. Uh, when you actually open it at King's Church, you'll look, uh, open the computer, you'll get this home screen, which I've actually print screened here, and you'll have two options. You have the Q Light Controller Plus and the QLC Kiosk Mode. Um, if you're just using it on a Sunday purpose, you want to use the Kiosk Mode because this is the most easy to use interface. So you select the kiosk mode like that. But if you're editing it or anything like that, then you should use uh, QLC Controller Plus. This is the interface which I'm currently using on this computer. But from this you can access that kiosk mode. So let's go into kiosk mode by pressing the play button up here. So now uh, the house lights have just become active because we've set it up in one of the settings. So here you can see uh, I've coloured the house lights to be a slightly yellow colour so you can clearly see them against the other ones. So let's go through the interface we got. Um, on the left hand side is the Grandmaster. Um, this is similar to an audio Grandmaster as in it reduces the whole light level of everything. So no matter what lights you have it will reduce uh, the intensity of all the light levels together simultaneously which is really useful if you want to go to a blackout to change between songs for an event or something. Um, so let's start on the top left. Uh, we've got house lights. Uh, these are fairly straightforward so we have dis different levels of the house lights. When it first starts up the house lights will all go to 100% um, but we have a couple of different levels so I can change it to reach level so the house lights will dim a little bit or go down to, down to worship they'll dim quite a lot or down to 0% and they'll fade out. Um, to the right of this we have our sliders so these are two types of sliders so on the left we have a relative slider this works relatively so depending on which button you have selected here the lights will only go up to that level. So say I have them on worship because that's the darkest level. Um, at 100% that's actually around 50% in real percentages. So this is 100% of 50%. A little confusing but once you've had a play with it um, it's getting the hang of it. And then on the right hand side here we have a house lights override. So the percentage it shows up here is uh, literally what the lights are actually doing. So if I slide this up to about 50% you won't see any change in the lights because um, the lights are already at 50%. If I start pushing this past you see the lights start to get brighter. This is because it works on a system called HTP which is means the highest lights level is the one that is used. So even though I'm sliding this one up and down the lights aren't going to change because 100% of uh, worship, which is 100% of 50%, um, is less than this 100%. So if I drop this, stay down to 20% 20, uh, 20%, something like that, and then slide this down, it will go all the way down to 20% and then stop until I raise that back up again. This is really cool because at an instant you can always override the house lights and just get full light full manual control if you need that in any situation. Another way to turn the house lights off is just to click the 
house lights button and it'll turn it off the grid and it'll fade out. So we turn the house lights back off again and let's put it back into preach mode. Okay, so as you notice there, the house lights just faded in. Um, this is set by the house light fade dial down here. When you first boot up, all the all the fade dials will be set at zero, which is confusing because, as you saw there, it didn't take zero seconds to fade in. It took like two seconds to fade in. So what I do at the start of um, every service is to just go through these lights and give some give them some arbitrary values so that you can actually see what they've got values assigned and it's less confusing then and also it means that the system doesn't get confused and remember some path numbers so if I change this fade down to one second and then turn it off it will take one second to turn off or again one second to turn on okay so that's the house light setup very simple there um, we're carrying down this left hand side we then have the stage lights uh, these again are very very similar to the house lights so you've got different setups for the house uh, for the lights so you've got stage lights all then all the main lights will come on uh, you've got stage light left and then that will light up the left hand side of the stage uh, stage lights middle that will light up the middle of the stage stage lights right uh, right light up the stage and 0% is well 0% of the phase out Again, for all of these, we have uh, both relative and override. So override will slam everything on, uh, which is not always what you want. But if you just need to quickly brighten up the scene for any particular reason, you can do that. OK, so moving on, we have um, different areas for each section of the lights. So at the top, we've got panels. At the back middle, we've got bars. And as you scroll down, we have the moving heads. So these are like folders on a Windows computer, so within that you have controls for different parts of the lights. The panels are for the RGB lights at the back, the multicolored lights at the back. Um, the bar ones are for the horizontal, horizontal and vertical bars, which illuminate the back behind the band. And then the moving heads are for the moving lights up in the roof. So let's start with the panels because it's at the top, makes sense. Um, you can ignore the fact that they have black and red and all that sort of stuff. Um, that's to do with programming it and I'll go through that in a later tutorial. But, but for now we just need to know what this does. So we've got still colours, top colours, bottom colours and fading colours. Um, the still colours, um, if you select it, selects both the top and bottom of that particular colour. So say we've got white or greeny blue or orange or something like that, it will fade it's from one colour to the other. And again we have fade times for this, so if I just take this down to zero to speed things up in this case, I can just flip between the colours or black them out. A lot of this software is all the same, so once you get a hang of one part of it, you'll see it repeated in other places, which makes it easier to use. Um, so, so we've got light blue there, and then we've got the top and bottom parts. So the top parts are the top two panels, and then the bottom are the bottom three panels. So we can change the top ones to red, and the bottom ones to green, or red and white, and maybe get a bit of a flag theme going, I don't know. Um, whatever you want. This is really fun if you're doing a fast live upbeat song and I'll show you through a demo of that later on. Um, fading colours, these cycle through uh, different sets of these colours. So red and orange changes between the red and orange ones uh, with both of them red, then one orange and red, and both of them orange, then red and orange and just keeps going loop like that. And I'll show you how to program that in another tutorial. And then on the right hand side we have the fading speeds. So the still fade is for all of these still colours at the top. Because these ones aren't changing, so that's why they're called still colours. And then the bottom one is the fading speed. So if I say put this to half a second, or yeah, half a second. And then 
pick red and orange. It takes half a second to fade between uh, the red and orange different colours. You can see the little groovy disco going on here and then also on the actual lights being shown. Um, for all of this we then have a control as well so we can um, adjust the intensity of it. Right, um, next down the list we have bar controls. So as you can see here we have the six bar lights. Um, each of these, each section of bars is controlled as one light. So you can't individually control the light bulbs on the actual bar itself. But we can do lots of fun stuff with this. So we can run the bars forwards like that. Or run them backwards, so from right to left. Or we can do stuff like bounce. So bounce is where it will go all the way to one end, bounce off it and then come all the way back again. Um, you might have heard of this called ping pong or another such thing. And in this case I've called it bot bounce. So we've got individual runs, we've got pairs, so it runs in pairs, again backwards in pairs or bouncing. Um, we've also got one that's just pulsing it, so all the lights will pulse on and off. Again the fades for all of these are controlled by the bar speed, so we can change it to a one second fade. Or if you're doing it for a song, uh, then you can tap the time. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This tap the time function is really useful so you can match the beat of the song and get the lights flashing with the song. And as you saw there, it adjusted the time to match the time you're tapping to. Um, we also have an independent bars flash. So you click that, it just flashes up to 100% and then carries on doing whatever it was doing beforehand. Uh, again, like the uh, stage and house lights, we have an override, so we can just override that to 100%, or fade it back down, or um, do stuff like that. Again, it works on the highest value light, so whichever one is higher, whether it's um, the bounce lights are higher, or, or the, the running lights sorry, are higher, or the override is higher, that's how bright the lights will be. Um, so next we have the moving heads. So uh, these run on a similar system to all the rest of the lights. Uh, we have uh, an intensity, so this is the brightness of the moving heads. Um, if we've just slid the slider up in Kings and the lights don't come on, it means the shutter's closed. It's closed by default, so don't worry about that. But this representation doesn't actually show whether the shutter is open or closed, as you can see there. So just make sure that's open and then the light will start working. But if it doesn't work then, then the bulb's gone. Uh, you can change between different colours on the heads. These work slightly differently from the still colours. <coughs> so if you click on the colour, it will fade down to zero, it will wait for a second as it flicks through the different colours, it will fade back up again. This is so that you don't get a random colour flickering um, during the song. And if you want it, so that case you'd be on rainbow and you'd be just cycling through the different colours. Um, so yeah, we've got the shutter, it can be open, closed, or uh, flashing fast or slowly. Um, prism on or off, that um, splits it up into three different parts. Uh, moving speed, similar to the bar speed, it will make it faster or slower. Gobos, so here we've got rough pictures of what the gobos look like. So you wanted the triple dot, you just click on Globo 4 and you can get the triple dot up and go on the wall. Um, these ones are shaking ones. So if you click to the left hand side of it, see it's only a little blue bar. If you have it there, then it will slate, it will shake very slowly. But if you have it all the way to the right hand side, it will shake a lot quicker. I personally never use the shakes, so just kind of stick with the general ones without shaking. So so you can put it on the triangles. Next we have position tab. So we've got a couple of set positions. So reset will point them straight to the floor. Um, outer stage to the outer sides of the stages, upper panels, 
points to look the up panels. Um, on the rotation, we have a couple of ways of controlling it. If you click on this tab here, you can open up uh, set values. So you can either have it no rotation, upside down, slow clockwise, fast clockwise, slow counterclockwise, fast counterclockwise. But say you don't want any of those specific values, you want between a slow and a fast one, so you want a medium clockwise spin. Uh, you can use these tabs to minimize it and then rotate it to a value of your choice. So when you're deciding on what colors to use, I usually talk with whoever's on AV and go through the different songs. Uh, you go through the different songs and work out what the general color for that song is going to be. So whether it's going to be a green song or an orange song or a pink song. And you try and match the lights to match the words in the background. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on how to use QRC+. Um, I'll leave links to the download file for this uh, file and a couple other bits in the description below. So please go check those out. If you like this, give us a like. If you want to see more of this, please subscribe. I will be uploading more in-depth videos in how to actually set up this sort of interface. Um, if you have any questions, just YouTube message me or Facebook me or email me. Okay. I'm always open to contact, so please uh, throw any questions that you got at me. Um, thank you for watching this. Good luck with your licensing scenarios and see you all next time.